Hello. A few weeks ago, watching television, there was a program announced uh, on the PBS station. It was a program called Slavery by Another Name. It got my attention being a descendant of slavery and having some information about the conditions of those days. So I was quite curious. And so I planned to watch the program. Sunday, the 12th, I got a phone call from a preacher. And he invited me to go out to a church on Monday evening, the same time that the program comes on. And it was just a prayer. Said he'd love to see me there. He enjoyed my participation in prayer meeting. Being that I'm somewhat of a preacher, but I kind of stay away from the church. Uh, in fact, I give my messages that I have over the YouTube and maybe Facebook for those of you who want to watch them. You don't want to, you don't have to. I don't have to pay any bills or expect you to bring your money and give it to me for bookkeep of a property. Not that I'm not getting those, but this is what I do. So I wasn't really excited about going to prayer because what I see the church has become is an agent of the state. And I'm wondering, what would I be praying for? Traditionally, you pray, ask God to bless everyone that's there, and the parents, and pray for a government, and, and if you've got some things that you want to ask for, otherwise, then you ask for them. But I've been given a mission that's somewhat different than that. I remember, and I will share with you, that I was somewhat like 28 years old, aspiring young man, full of energy, ready to do whatever God has given me to do, living in Chicago. And at that time, the conditions of society had fallen so low. Poverty, crime, and violence, nothing that's new, but it caught me at a time when I was ready to serve in a capacity where I was needed. And this, to bring justice to the land in the name of God for all people, was that striving forth, that burning forth, that pushed me off into this massive, massive indulgence. And so, being 28 years old, I was glad that I had been called to do this. God had proven to me that he existed. In other words, I usually refer to it as my sense of the burning bush that Moses had a chance to experience. I had my own. My burning bush was not a literal burning bush, but in it that God gave, shared with me, there was no doubt. It was just as solid an acceptance of the reality of God as that of Moses. And God had blessed me even before then. So I was excited, willing to pay any price, sacrificing anything to do God's will. And also a little naive. I thought that it would not be complicated because I had a voice, a, a voice with a message, and people had a hunger, I anticipated, that with a little leadership, they would be willing and ready to go out and, and accept this new blessing, this new awareness of a blessing that was being made uh, known to them at this time. Well, before I could do the job that God had given me, God had to train me. And so he sent me many different places through my sacrifice, some places halfway around the world to teach me certain things, certain things that had brought me to this point of knowledge in what, from 28 years to now kind of old and tired, 60 some years old. And I was wondering, what would I pray for? This program, Slavery by Another Name. And it dawned on me, as those of you who are familiar with the Willie Lynch letter, it dawned on me that the church is also a form of slavery. It's a slavery 
to tradition, men who want to be somebody in the light of the Lord, taking on the task of being ministers and preachers and elders and bishops, not being called, but choosing it, going to Bible school and learning the scriptures and uh, setting out to do God's work. I call it getting them a business, uh, entrepreneurship in the steward of God. Because what I have over these years, these 30 some odd years noticed that they are scripturally oriented, they are Bible, biblically oriented, and uh, they do nothing. They serve no real purpose except the traditional stuff of going to church on Sunday and maybe Bible studies on Wednesdays or Fridays, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they are able to get people to come under the guise of worshiping God. But what actually takes place is a form of indoctrination of uh, their particular way of reaching and satisfying God. They basically, over the years, tell biblical stories over and over again. So if you go to church, you heard when you were a kid. Now you are old on your deathbed, and you're still hearing those same Bible stories. But what have you learned from them, and what have they done for you? You probably lived your life, as most people do, doing what you want to do, and then started going to church and still doing what you want to do, but cutting back on some of it. Uh, you get a little old, you think you've got to change your ways a little bit, you're getting close to that deathbed. And so you call yourself a Christian. You know, everybody, if you let them tell the story, or some relative tell the story, when they die, they go to heaven. Uh, everybody's good when they're dead. The Alpha poem. Oh, it goes to heaven. Uh, my and Clyde go to heaven. Everybody goes to heaven when they die. You got somebody to tell the story. You don't have to live a righteous life or a good life or life without any real purpose that serve humanity. Just do your thing and go to church. Well, I'm thinking if I go to church to pray, I would have to get on my knees and I'd have to apologize to God, first of all, for not being forthcoming when I speak to preachers. You know, I found out a long time ago that the, one of the first messages that God gave me to tell the church, not the people out here in society, but the church, that they were failing God. They were serving the state and not God. Jesus said that I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the light. What he was talking about symbolizing with that cross. Before you sell your soul out to the state, be willing to die for what is right. And no, you know that's not any story or any message that is being given and people are not uh, committed to their cross. They're just playing games in my estimation. And so I would go there and I would pray and apologize to God for believing that I would be successful. Believing that the church would rise to the occasion. That after 33 years of constant champion, constantly marching down this path, seeking out justice for all, I found no church that would stand with me. I found no Christian soul that would stand with me. And for these 33 years, I've had to do this thing alone. And you can tell if I'm doing it alone, I haven't accomplished anything because the people are not listening. The people don't want to hear this. And the reason that they want to hear it is because they've been indoctrinated similar to that Willie Lynch letter called um, Creating a Slave, Making a Slave. Well, these people have been made into a do-nothing church, not serving God at all, pimping God. That's what I call it, pimping God. And I know a lot of preachers. I know a lot of ministers. I know a lot of elders. I got them in my family. And they all think that they are doing good. What they're actually doing is what was done before them. It was accepted then, and if they're doing it now, it must be all right. Nobody will stand up and tell them that they are pimping God and they are not serving God. And that's the message that I was given 33 years ago to bring to the church. But I found myself being kind of weak, not wanting to say that because I wanted to somewhat be accepted by the organization of the church. And so when God said, tell them that they're on the path to hell, I said, on the road to paradise, um, American Christians, from hell to paradise, anything other than just saying, God is saying you are misfit, because I know what, how they will treat me 
as a misfit. And so I gave them the glory instead of God. And I wanted to apologize for that. And I knew if I'm there at this church, the only thing I can do as far as justifying going is to get on my knees and publicly say to God before these ministers what I have just shared with you. Well, Monday comes around, it's snowing. I don't hear from the preacher at the time that I'm supposed to hear from him, so I don't go to church and because we were supposed to go together. So I'm assuming that maybe he decided not to go or whatever the reason I'm here and I get the opportunity to see slavery by another name. And as I witness the things, those of you who might have seen that PBS program, sharecropping, peenage, Black people being ample, poor whites being persecuted with injustice, all of these things they're experiencing while other people call themselves self-made men at the expense of other men, like all rich people have done. If you study your history book, mostly all rich people got rich at the expense of somebody else's pain. And so the whole message that I have for the world is justice. I say it is justice. It is justice because God wants all of the people. God made you. And God wants you to experience. You see, the earth for humankind is the Garden of Eden. The same thing that you have been told that Adam and Eve inherit. This is, whether you know it or not, the Garden of Eden. And here you can create heaven or you can create hell. To create heaven, you must follow the truth. The truth is that God is supreme and we are God's creation and we must respect one another and treat each other as though we know that we are God's creation. We are brothers and sisters. We are each other's keeper. And we will create heaven on earth. But if we buy a lie that somebody is superior to another, you got here first and you took some land and all of this land is yours and now, in order for somebody to eat, you can give them some crumbs and they'll work for you for the crumbs so that they can eat and live. That this is a great, wonderful nation. It's an unjust nation. And the people have the responsibility to overthrow anything that's unjust, demoralizing, inhumane. God is calling on people who are being persecuted to stand up just like he's called on people who are doing the persecution to stop. And so that's basically been my message. And as I sat there and I watched these people, and I'm reminded it's the same thing that slavery has always been. And I can't wait for the program to go off, last about an hour and a half of commercial, so I can come and share with you this message. Slavery, by another name. If you are not free to experience your dream, you are living in slavery. The rest of society is holding that over you, and you are allowing them to do so. And God does not like that. So I sit here today, and I call on everybody, everybody in the United States of America that's not happy, that's not prosperous, that's not peaceful and joyous. Today is the day for your awakening. Today is the day that you are being challenged to stand up and let God be your master. If you are prostituting your bodies, ladies, I know how complicated life can be. And I know how men's minds work, especially those who have a book. And they want your body and they'll give you some money for your body. And you need that money in your mind. And you get that money by selling your body. But I want you to stop. Realize that God did not make your body to be sold for money. God made your body to do what he has given you to do. And if you're laid, maybe just produce some children. Not just bring in a bunch of kids into the world. But replenish the earth to keep it populated. And I call on you to stop prostituting. Stop prostituting and get on board. I'm trying to organize something that within you to get on board. Those of you who commit crimes like in the drug business, 
even though you don't want to sell drugs, but selling drugs sometimes can be very prosperous if you can avoid the jail. I'm calling on you by the power of God to stop selling drugs. You are not supposed to be selling drugs to survive. And I want you to stop it. And I'm going to give you a reason. The reason is so you can live free. Those of you who are gang banging, I know you're chained together because you feel a, a, a family relationship there. You feel that you have purpose. You are not alone and that you can accomplish so much as a group. Even though you're mad at the world and you think violently and that's the path that you've chosen, I'm calling on you to stop it. If you're a member of the mafia, you know what the world is like. Nobody knows any more better than you do. But I'm calling on you to stop your mafia activities. I'm asking you to get on board of a new ship. I want you to know that what you're doing is that you are a slave. You don't know it, but I'm telling you today that those activities are those of slaves. If you're walking around letting some government figure tell you to pick up a gun and go into battle, I'm asking you to stop today in the name of God. You're not free. And God did not make you to pick up guns killing folks for some reason that you don't even understand. If you're going to kill, let it be in defense of what's right and not just follow the orders. And this goes to police, FBI, CIA, NSA, any and everybody. Stop killing folks and just because you follow them. I'm calling on you movie stars, you guys who are there making movies. Stop pretending like you're having sex with people on TV and movie screens. Stop kissing and slobbering all over these other people that are not your significant others just to satisfy some movie producer ability to make money. You are being used and you are a slave in such activities as that. I'm asking all of you who are calling yourselves Christians, who are going to these big churches or small churches, hearing these Bible stories over and over and over again, I'm asking you to stop giving yourself to this foolishness and call your pastor to stand up and represent something. Tell him to stop talking and start walking. Set him to stand up and be a representation of God in activities and not just open up a thing to teach Bible study or have a soup line. Make sure that the things that make peace and humanity are the things that your pastor is doing. So I'm asking you to cut out all that junk. It is nothing but junk. I know you don't want to hear it, but it's nothing but junk. You have spit God up in 10,000 different denominations. And every last one of you think you're right. And you are right because you're not serving God. You're serving your own interests. And the evidence is that you cannot come together and do anything for God. You are just out there on your own. You might have a small church. That's your small power. Or you might have 10,000 members coming to your church giving you a million dollars a month. You still are nothing but a slave. And you're being used by the system to keep your mind off God. I'm calling all of you together. Wake up. If you are Republican or Democrat, how in the world, and I know you call yourself loving God, how in the world do you think a God is sitting on the fence with Republican, sitting on the fence with Democrat, and they can't stand each other? They have no programs that embrace one another. Stop believing that foolishness that you had embedded in your mind. Wake up, grow up, stand up, and be men and women of God. Now, what I'm asking you to do, I'm asking you to cut out all this stuff and stand up together and demand that this system is changed. Don't just demand it. Change it. Don't ask other people to change it for you. Play a role in getting it changed. Now, I know that the billionaires and millionaires who have taken over this nation, when you decide that you're going to do this, going to call your brothers and sisters on the put you in concentration camps, put you in prison and stuff like this. And if they won't do it, they'll bring some foreign military force from overseas to come here and do that. You know that they'll do that. That's why you have submitted yourselves to be obedient to this type of slavery. But I want you to know today, if you decide that you're not going to be a slave, if you decide to stand up and be truly lovers of one another, I promise you, God will take care of you. 
And if anybody come and challenge you in this endeavor, they will be overcome like Pharaoh at the Red Sea. They will be overcome like all of those crazy people that Sodom and Gomorrah done all the crazy things. I tell you, I promise you this. Now you wonder sometimes, I'm sure, after hearing this, how do I know? And can you trust the messenger here? Well, I tell you what. I'm speaking to you because I care. I'm speaking to you because God cares, and I know God cares. I'm not going sitting here with a blue checker suit on that belonged to my son 10 years ago, even though it did. But I want you to know that I'm not a new person. I've been out here for 33 years, and my first action after leaving the federal employment with the Veterans Administration was to go into the military as an expedition to learn what God has for me and what God has for you. And one of my first acts was to quit the military. I mean, just drop the ball, accept court martial under a president named Ronald Reagan, who was doing every kind of thing he could to promote the rich and causing so much pain and suffering to the poor, not just in this country, but in other countries. And I wanted to have nothing to do with it. I didn't want to receive any veterans benefits after that because it was illegal, it was immoral, and I did not want to be a part of it. And since that time, I've been out here speaking over and over again to you because I want you to know some truths. I want you to take a charge of your own life. And you have, for one reason or another, failed to get that message. And I've gone to some extremes to try to get your attention. I've committed crimes against the law. Crimes, I say crimes against the law. Crimes against the state as well. And i paid penalties because in my initial acts, the hope was that I could get into court and get a jury to change what was expected to happen to me. If I committed a crime, the prosecution expected me to go to jail. I expected the jury to hear what was going on and exonerate me, giving all kinds of opportunities for these laws to be changed. But I needed the support of the people because the jury represented the state. They didn't represent, they weren't of my peers. The judge and the prosecution made sure of that. But I had the church to depend on. And they turned around and walked away. I had the prostitutes, the poor, those of you who would benefit from everything I'm saying here today to depend on. And all of you turned and walked away. And I still stood there with the power of God with me all the way. And I was able to endure everything that I've been had confronted with. And I'm here today to speak to you, to ask you, please do not play this foolish game any longer. When you hear these Republicans talking about going back following the Constitution, what they're actually saying is create slavery again. Get rid of anything that brought you up just a little bit and take it back so they can totally be in control. When you hear Sarah Palin talking, that's what she's talking about. And all of those people that's excited, shaking, clapping their hands, they are in support of you losing even this little stuff, the right to be a prostitute, the right to sell dope to try to survive, the right to lie, cheat, and steal as a mechanism to stay afloat. They are applauding. Get them, get them, get them. And the Democrats have nothing more to offer. Look around. For those of you who just hope that one day you never, somebody in the office that care about you, and who could you get that would care about you more? That a black man, especially if you're black, you look at the number of people that that black man has brought into office to help him administrate over this nation, and you will find very few black men. I can think of one. Now, I'm not talking about Eric Holden, but I can think of one, and I think that's the guy that walks around with Barack and carries his shoes and neck tie, two brushes stuff, so he can need it. Everybody else is Lily White. Every, and I'm not trying to put you down because you're white, even though you were the author of a lot of trouble in this land. I want you to know that there is no peace for poor people unless there's peace for white people. And there should not be no prosperity for white people unless there's prosperity for poor people. Whether you're black or white, whatever. There should not be any. And the only reason that it is is because you're ruled by uh, the devil. Satan, and you're afraid. You're afraid. What you do, you think is right. And those people who are being abused, who 
you wrong, you are afraid as well. Well, here's what you can do. I would love for you to organize yourselves if you want. If you don't have time to organize yourself, if your situation in life is too rough, then just go to the polls in every state in the United States of America, whether they accept a write-in candidate or not. And if they got a blank spot up there in that presidential slot, write Eddie Marcus' name in there. Write Eddie Marcus. And let writing my name in there not mean only that you want me to be the president of the United States, that you would also support the initiatives that I have offered to you today and I will be offering to you in the future. What are those that I'm trying to offer to you? I believe just as if somebody can come up and require that you register to go into the military, then they can require some other things. Every last one of you have a desire to be something special. You feel that you're something special and you want to do it. But sometimes the system will bring you in, and other times it will not. But with a new way of thinking, a new way of understanding, and some new people in office, Ed Marcus as president, and you supporting it, every last one of you can have a career of your choosing. Now, if you're not qualified to do expertly the things that you'd like to, unlimited and unrestricted education is yours. It's from God. It's not from the state. It's not from the federal government. If it, for them to try to say that they are giving it to you, that means they have stolen it from all of you, and they're trying to manipulate it. But if you allow them to manipulate it in such a way it leaves you out, you will slave. So I'm saying bring it back. Take it back. Utilize education. Utilize it to its fullest. Not as they say, but as you need it. And become knowledgeable in those fields that you have chosen. Let yourselves have abundance in every way. Healthcare. Make sure that no one had to walk six miles, run ten miles for support, financial support to fight a disease, cancer, MS, and all of this. What the heck is that? If there's a disease that's threatening your life, there shouldn't be no limitation on anything that people could utilize to be able to bring relief from these situations. What is this I heard the other day about babies who are having cancer but some medication is coming short and it might not be that these kids are going to die. And they say, and they're talking about money. It's all about money. What in the world is that? How can anybody in this nation have the wherewithal, the ability to create and establish the necessary medication to help these little babies and don't because they want to harness a market so they can be paid. What kind of junk is this? What kind of world am I living in? What kind of world are you living in? Can you continue to put up with this? Ladies and gentlemen, don't. I know it's kind of hard for me to just stand here and say don't and you to say I won't or I'm with your brother. But I'm telling you, I am telling you, this pain and suffering that the people are going through, you are a partner in it. The only ones that are not a partner in it are those who are trying to change it. Now let me ask you this. Is your church trying to make sure that all Americans got a job? Is your church trying to make sure that everybody in America, not just your congregation, got unlimited, unrestricted education and health care. Is your church trying to do that? If your church is not trying to do that, if your church is there talking about saving your soul, getting you into heaven, that is the devil. I don't care what you say. Let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. If I ask you about America Vespucci, you might not know who that is. But if you were sincere about trying to give a response, you go to your encyclopedia, you go to Google it, you look it up, and you come back and tell me some stuff that you read. Doesn't mean you really know, but this is what you read. Most of the time, everybody in your church, your special pastor, if you ask them about God, they will say, the Bible said. The Bible said. You know why they say the Bible said? Because they have no personal relationship with God. 
if a man or woman or anybody that want to tell you about God and got a personal relationship with God, they don't need a book. Everybody who they got in that Bible that was telling them the stories about God didn't have a book. Why do your leader have to have a book? He got to have a book because he does not know what he's talking about. If I told you about your mother, it'll be because of something I read. Maybe it's a public reference. Maybe on some other research I did. But I can't tell you about your mother like you can tell us about your mother. You got experts trying to tell you about this, that, and other. And most of them have got all the information from reading. And those who actually experience the stuff are locked up in jail. Or sitting at home someplace, making no money. And I'm not advocating making money. I'm just saying how you're being ripped off. You are playing partnership in your slavery. I want you to stop it. God wants you to stop it. And look, my whole mission is this. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We used to talk about slavery as slavery was, as you've been taught it was. But slavery, by another name, is all of the things that I mentioned to you here today that keeps you from experiencing peace, that keeps you from experiencing prosperity, that keeps you from experiencing joy, that keeps you from experiencing your dreams, that keeps you from enjoying heaven right here on earth in this garden of Eden. All of that is slavery under another name. God wants you to pull off those shackles. And I'm just a messenger letting you know that you can pull off those shackles. It's all in you. You don't have to wait for the government to say, I'm going to train you loose and do this for you. You make up your mind today that you are going to remove those shackles. And do it before we have to have war in the streets. Because if you wait too long, and I hope you haven't waited too long already, that will be the outcome. These folks who have been robbing you, they don't want to give it up. And they will do everything they possibly can to keep you a slave until they realize it doesn't matter what they do. You are not going to be a slave. You are willing to pay any price. You are not going to be a slave. Jesus Christ, they walk to the cross. Let them nail your hands, let them nail your feet. Let them put a crown on your head, let them pierce you in the side. And let your blood flow, but you do that at all. For the glory of God, do not be a slave. If they tell you they will give you the world to be in a movie, plan a hoe, or a bitch, sell them hell or no. If they tell you they will give you a nice mansion, if you just go out and shoot down that man out there that's speaking so boldly in the name of God, tell them, hell no. And ladies and gentlemen, you know why they're quick? Because if they can't control you, they would have to try to control one another. And they ain't going for that. So the battle would already be won. In fact, the battle is already won. All you got to do is put the shoes on and walk in victory. Until next time, this is Eddie Marcus saying,